Welcome to another episode of the Pillow Fry Podcast. I'm Alyssa. I'm Kay. And I'm Emma. And we are your three besties here to keep you in the loop of all things news, reviews, and horror. That's right. We have been so freaking busy, you guys. Like, we've been doing this a month now. And oh my lord. I mean, so much. Can you see that we've aged like seven years? <laughs> the wrinkles, the, the 4K can't hide this anymore. <laughs> they just can't hide. Nah, that's just me stealing your youth. <laughs> I the knew it. The 4K can't hide the trauma of doing a podcast. Y'all, it's hard work. <laughs> it's a lot of work, but it's worth it. So we had the Slasher Size premiere a couple weeks ago. Yes. That was the craziest day of my life. Every time I have a a low self-esteem moment i'm just gonna remember that and i cried I, I was like a proud mom in the back just <laughs> crying and cheering i was very happy for you we all were oh when i saw a slasher size on the arrow marquee i was like oh it was a whole thing. as you should you earned it oh, i don't know but it was exciting yeah uh we it was did- great to hear audience reactions uh to us sweating so you yeah. know you always love people being like yeah sweat more yeah. like we got a standing ovation and i died i died <laughs> it's one for the books people got it on camera too so you could oh, you could look back uh so we did that um so one thing i think we really need to bring up is the fact that on may 10th miss anna and i uh were on a little show called the last drive-in with joe bob briggs <sighs> Even just saying that out loud makes me want to cry. Uh, For anybody who may not know, Joe Bob Briggs is my hero. He is responsible for me being the horror weirdo that I am today. He is who introduced me to many of the horror films that changed my life uh, when he was on Monster Vision in TNT. And uh, my mom said it best when I texted her about being on the show she texted me back saying, oh, I'm so proud of you, honey. Now I know who to thank for having you chase after us with knives when you were younger. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, thanks, Joe Bob. Thanks for teaching me how to chase around <laughs> my family with knives. No, but uh, so we both were uh, featured as guests on the show with Vanessa Decker. We were promoting Slasher Size in uh, the Joe Bob way. I should probably also mention that our dear, sweet Joe Bob and Darcy the Male Girl, a.k.a. Diana Prince, they were both in Slasher Size as well. So it makes sense. And so we were featured in a little uh, little exercise segment. If you saw it, this was the Death Spa episode. And yeah, Emma and I were uh, were some uh, slasher size girls, slasher slasher sizeettes, sla- slasherettes. I don't, I don't know. But that was a dream of mine, and I don't know <laughs> how you quite felt because I know you're not in front of the camera so much. But it was amazing, and I yeah, check it out. It's on Shutter still. Death Spa was the episode, and you can catch us being ridiculous. <laughs> um. You hosted a round of Dead Right Horror Trivia. Yes. They have bonus rounds oftentimes there. And then we thought, why not? There's so much going on. Why don't we just do, you know, a a slasher size fitness themed bonus round? And it went over really well, I think. (laughs) Better than the last one that we tried to do. For anyone who doesn't know, Dead Right Horror Trivia takes place uh, in Burbank. A bunch of horror nerds get together and uh, do a... Compete for who is the biggest, the king of the nerds uh, with horror, (laughs) uh, with questions that are pretty wide variety. It's hosted by uh, Becca McKendry and Jared Rivett. And I was going to say, this is Jared's test if you're watching this. Say, I heard you talk about me. (laughs) I heard heard you talking about me over there. That's what we write. That's going to be kept uh, in. On answers. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But maybe we should add those, our our trivia round, to our Patreon so people can test their knowledge. Yeah. That would be cool. Let us know if you'd like a little uh, trivia on the (laughs) Patreon. Yeah, we'll put it in the Discord. Um, We interviewed Tom McLaughlin. Freaking talk about my crying dream. That man, what a sweet man. Tom, if you're listening. 
He <laughs> was so nice yeah. and he was so knowledgeable. I love interviewing somebody who loves horror. Yes. And Tom McLaughlin, if, if you don't know, he directed many things. He's actually had a vast career, but a lot of horror fans know him from Friday 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. He's also done Sometimes They Come Back. He's done a lot. A lot of stuff. And he's in a band called the Sloths. The Sloths. Sloth. The Godzilla Slothzilla. 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 <laughs> uh, but he, I mean, we got to talk to him not just about horror, but also about, um, I don't know, it was, it was about life. Like it was, life. it was really great. Yeah. Um, he, he is, like you said, he's a really passionate person, not just about films and directing, but you can, t- the way he talks about being a horror kid was very easy to relate to. It's very reminiscent of like, yeah how a lot of us got our our starts um he just got to have his in hollywood so he had like the leg up which is awesome um a little jealous of that because a lot of the things that we've talked about like oh i wish i could have seen the exorcist live when it first premiered and he's just like yeah so i got to see the exorcist when it were and all this stuff it's like oh my god so um, people's reactions all that and it made me think you know what movie today is like i guess maybe hereditary or something i don't know but you don't have that big kind of outstanding oh there's a twist blah 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 but yeah tom i mean if you're watching listening please come back please anytime anytime truly. anytime we, we are we love you we are crowdfunding currently so that we can all uh have a ride in jason's coffin as that is something <laughs> uh that he he put out there you can uh you can rent rent some coffin time a little nap i mean i'd do it are you kidding me that's a dream um <laughs> so we did that and then we got to do something that was on my bucket list. We interviewed Fred Decker and Bradford May and Mike May from the Monster Squad. And oh my gosh, we did that at the Chicago Film Festival Saturday night. Mm-hmm. Right after the screening of <laughs> Mon- of Monster Squad. I mean, that was and a day. That was that was our first time ever moderating a panel. It was totally scary. Uh, doing, I feel like we killed the intro. I hope somebody <laughs> filmed it so that we could uh, show you guys because I'm pretty proud of that. Yeah, it was a, uh, it was great to uh, go to the Lumiere Cinema uh, at the uh, Music Hall mm-hmm. and um, get to be around again bunch of horror nerds. It's always great to be around your people. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and, um, I, I know we talked about uh, in our first episode. About the movies that made us monster kids, and that happened to be Emma's monster kid movie. I know. Do you recall if you listened to the first episode? And we had no idea that this was going to fall in our laps. Like, we were at the Slasher Sites premiere and talking to the guys who run Shaka Gogo, and they're just like, oh, want to moderate a panel? And we're like, yup. <laughs> So and I have to thank Chris Beyond from Peep Show Menagerie, who uh, I do burlesque with. They he was heavily involved and he helped kind of connect us to a lot of this stuff because I I performed some really awkward burlesque there as well. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> you were great. You were great. <laughs> so thank you, Chris, if you're watching. And yeah, and Alyssa did uh, burlesque with a jump rope, and we a made jump a jump rope. <laughs> we made a. <laughs> We made a costume about an hour before we left. Yes. It was great. <laughs> Revamped a little existing routine to fit some slasher size a little bit. A little, a little bit. But I mean, what a what a first month. Yeah. We've had a great month. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you for everyone who's been listening. Yes. Um, because if you weren't here enjoying it, you know, we wouldn't be getting these opportunities. And we're excited yeah. to have more and more opportunities that we get to share with you. You know, this is just... This is since it's the first month. It's just the beginning. We have, you know, we have videos. We have, we're going to be blowing up the YouTube uh, with all all the stuff that you're only hearing the audio of. And uh, you have to look at these mugs a lot more. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, we promise there's lots of that in store. Yeah, we've got these, these great, uh, we've been calling them our slumber party episodes, but you guys haven't really gotten to see what a slumber party episode is yet. And it's like... <laughs> An actual slumber party. We build a set. We watch a movie. We do really silly shit. It's it's going to be so much fun. And I hope you guys connect with it and don't think we're silly. Boy, howdy do we. (laughs) And if you're watching this right now, that's super meta because you are watching it. That means you made it. Well, this isn't the slumber party, but it's one of our videos. Anyway, (laughs) I got another little uh, little interesting tidbit of news for y'all. 
So Deadline just released a statement that Sony has given us a date for a new Insidious film from the Insidious franchise from Blumhouse. It is set to release on August 29th, 2025, so still a ways away. But uh, there aren't any further details about the project that were disclosed, except for the fact that it's not the Jeremy Slater helmed thread in Insidious Tale, which is a spinoff starring Mandy Moore and Kamel Nanjiani, which <laughs> is an interesting pairing. Uh, I would have never thought of them together as a uh, duo on screen, but uh, I'm not mad about it. I'm really not mad about it. Um, so have you guys watched anything new this week? Or is there anything you're excited to watch? I did just watch, uh, I watched, I mean, Nicolas Cage. He's, if he's in a movie, it's like, okay, I guess we're going to watch this because, yes. um, as much as if he won't say no to a part, then I won't say no to a Nicolas Cage movie. I think that's a fair, you know, that's a fair ask. Um, and so I watched <laughs> Flack. What is it? Re- uh, something is that what it's called? scenic. No, scene. No. What is it? The new one that just came out on HBO that he did where it's about dream sequence. Oh, dream scenario. There we go. Yes. That's, okay, that's a wild so movie. It's uh yeah, that was yeah, dream scenario was it was a really interesting movie that and then where it ended up going i was like oh god damn it i hope this never becomes reality it was <laughs> it it i didn't expect it to go there i would say like it's horror but not horror horror yeah because it was more um like mental like oh but i would i don't know psychological horror psycho light psychological yeah. horror psychological i mean light. it had its its world premiere at beyond fest here in los angeles and that is a genre festival so i think mm-hmm. it's fair to count it mm-hmm. yeah i think you know I think it's one of those things where it's scary because of the times, because of, uh, but also just, you know, we've done, there's been so many movies, you know, besides, I'm literally, as I'm saying this, looking at a poster of Nightmare on Elm Street, Dream Warriors, that's on the other side there. Um, Like, our dreams and our nightmares is horror. Like, that's where we come Mm -hmm. up with the scariest thing. So I think that the movie is basically about someone infiltrating your dreams. Mm -hmm. And that is scary in the sense of, God, I hope no one is ever able to do that because that would me up i would hate that uh but it was a really interesting movie i think it was well done for the fact that it was like a crazy thing i did not think it was over the top at all i was like damn it this is what would happen this is real and i hate when movies do that because i'm like oh you got me because that's where i'm like all right yep okay now i'm uncomfortable <laughs> uh have you watched anything are you excited for did any- I? I don't know if I watched anything to be honest except i mean monster squad <laughs> at the <laughs> festival not really. I mean, nothing. It's been so busy that I really haven't had a chance to catch up. But, um, you know, I'm excited for a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of really great news happening right now. And thank you for keeping me informed. <laughs> There's a lot of like teen horror shows making that, you know, can make just like fun, uh, approachable horror. But then we're also at the same time getting teen horror that is like I saw the TV glow. So it's where we're getting everything we're getting like something that's really deep and can you know resonate and then there's also something that's just escapism and fun and because everyone deserves to have both of those things yeah we need a lot more escapism these days too <laughs> that's for it's sure true. the but real world is scary. we need all of it we need all of it well should we should we uh speaking be- of escapism <laughs> escapism oh boy i mean are you, are you guys ready to get back into mystic may yeah, before the before the month ends. I'm always ready. <laughs> this has been like Alyssa's month. Uh, good time. Good time. <laughs> well, today's episode is about one of my person. <laughs> you can't even say that with a straight face. face. <laughs> this week's episode is about one of my personal. Uh, I can't say favorites, but I'm gonna say guilty pleasures. Uh, it's a movie called The First Power, starring Lou Diamond Phillips. <laughs> Say that seriously. It's the... <laughs> nope. Um, why don't you give us the it's, synopsis? Well, it's, uh, oh. if you want to watch it, it is currently streaming on uh, both Pluto and Tubi. So depending on what free channel you get your horror from. They have it also on Apple TV. So Can we take a one second and talk about Tubi? Because I love the choices that you oh. can get. It's like the closest thing to like walking into like a mom and pop video shop. Yes. Yeah. Tubi has great choices. Uh I also they we saw them at Midsummer Scream last year. Like oh, they really? were Yeah, they had a they had a fun setup with like a claw machine um Ooh. that you could try and uh uh 
win toys from but i i had that's the first time i'd seen them at a horror convention was last year and i was really happy that they were getting into it like as someone who has been watching shutter since before it was like an app and need more of that and you know of course there's screen box but it's nice to have a free version i mean to be aside from just the horror they have all these weird sub genres but any any app that has microwave massacre on it <laughs> is okay no. by me <laughs> yeah, you can. Uh, I, it reminded me of what Shutter originally was before AMC, of just being like really good um, curation yeah. of like, all right, we're gonna watch this weird ass stuff and just like, but have fun because sometimes the weird ass stuff is what exactly what you want on. Where yeah. you look up and you're like, huh, I never thought of murdering someone with a toilet plunger, but I guess it works. All right, well, let's. What's what's the synopsis for this movie, Alyssa? Oh, well, what is it? A Los Angeles detective and a psychic are stalked by a killer whose pact with the devil has allowed him to return from the grave. And as always, non-spoilers, don't worry, we'll get into the non-spoilers first. And then we'll get into the spoilers because uh, if we even know what we're talking about, because this movie, <laughs> this is a trip. She bonkers. She bonkers. Well, let's let's put our trailer with, uh, I think it's one of the last ones. I don't know if it's the last, last ones, but it's voiced by Don LaFontaine. Oh. Like, I, I put it on last night and I was like, ooh, <laughs> haven't heard this voice in a hot minute. Um, yeah, check it out. In a world. Where in a world. <laughs> Which is also a good movie. It in is. a world. <laughs> so, in a sentence, what was your initial reaction? I don't think you want to start with. That that's the that is that is it. <laughs> you just answered the question. <laughs> I'd never seen this movie before. It was a movie. We'll we'll uh, preface this with uh, it was my choice. This this was the one that I chose for the month, and um, and I will be getting revenge. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, guys? Not sorry. Not you know sorry. what? I I. What's a sentence? How do I sum it up? Nineties <laughs> made for TV movie with. A big stunt budget, but also they weren't preparing for this to be released in 4K. <laughs> so accurate. Um, if you love hard-boiled, angry, drunky cop movies, uh, if you love where they like have like chiefs that yell at you like, oh, "I'm sick of this shit." Uh, their brown. I'm suits. too old for this. I'm getting too old for this shit. Brown suits, bald heads, big mustaches. Uh. Celebrity psychics, mm -hmm. forced love interests, <laughs> Richard Ramirez as killers and nuns. nuns. <laughs> Just thrown uh, in there, a little sprinkling of nunnery. A little, little sprinkling. You gotta when when there's any sort of ritual or 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 a pentagram involved. Of course, you have to have a nun or yes, so, religion. Yes. <laughs> um. This movie is pure fun. It's entertainment from one end to the other, and uh, I'm not sorry I made you guys watch it. <laughs> yeah. So actually, I found this movie when I was like 11, 12, like it was like the end of my getting babysat years, uh, but it was like old enough that I probably could have been alone, but my mom wasn't quite there yet. Uh, anyway, my babysitter gave me the VHS and was like, check this out, and it actually scared the shit out of me as a little kid. <laughs> Uh, so it's, it's a movie I've, I've seen many times, but not in a long time, not in like at least 10, oh. 20 years. Definitely a time capsule. She sure is. <laughs> she sure is, it Alyssa. Is. But honestly, when this movie was being made, I think they, they had around $10 million. Um, they did a, t a bunch of test screenings. It tested so well, like amazingly well, all positive so well, they gave them way more money. To go back and shoot a bigger ending. Oh. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so they go back. They reshoot this ending. Goes to theaters. Kills. Makes tons of money. And I think they set it up because they thought they were going to get a sequel. But the director, writer-director, seems to have disappeared off the face of the earth. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it it's a one and done for now. <laughs> well, for now. Well. His pact with the devil came due, and uh, he went away. <laughs> Never too late. That's kind of crazy. I want to know more about him disappearing. That's weird. I tried to find him yesterday. I was like, well, I wonder if this guy still exists. Can we talk to him? And I looked him up on the internet, and there's nothing. Not a, wow. he, nothing. Not a Facebook. Not a LinkedIn. Do you think that 
it was a stage name or or oh, maybe but he's got a couple credits under it i i'll tell you guys this because i think it's funny ish i try to convince these ladies to get a cameo from lou diamond phillips so we could because he allows questions and i wanted to ask him like about it in detail but it was very expensive and hence i was shot down but if you want us to get a cameo of lou diamond phillips just let us know send us 175 dollars and find out if we can put cameos on youtube (laughs) Uh, (laughs) the legality is is something i don't feel the time to look into (laughs) anyway um so it, it it was not critically well received but the fans uh, it, it had an audience when it came out. And then I guess in the last few years, for some reason, 2012 was a big spike in resurgence. I don't know why, if it was maybe on some sort of streaming or if it was released in some way, but it started to find an audience again. And 2020, even bigger. And now there's a big call for maybe a sequel or I know Lou, Lou Diamond Phillips has talked extensively about how he... Would like to make a sequel to this movie, and he would specifically like to make it with Blumhouse. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't um, imagine. A, I feel like a sequel in this could be really, really cool in today's world. Because I mean, it's weird. It's it's kind of that double edged sword because it's such a time capsule and it's so beautiful with its flaws and its limitations from 1990. It's plot holes. <laughs> it's plot. <laughs> Well, I mean, they did just, and I haven't watched this yet. It was actually, it's one of the things I'm excited to watch on Shudder is Night Watch. Night. With Ewan McGregor? No. Night. (laughs) Night Court? Night Court. (laughs) No. Oh, shit. It's a a movie. It's a movie that, like, the original one literally came out 30 years ago, and and they're both on Shudder right now, and I have not seen either of them, but I was like, oh, what a fun double feature. But instead of doing, like, a direct sequel, they did... The actual thirty years later, kind of like ah, well, a twenty-seven year later thing with it. It looked it looked pretty good. It's with the guy from Game of Thrones and Mama, the Nikolai, incestuous um, brother from yeah, yeah, Game Jamie, of Thrones, Jamie, Jamie Lannister. Lannister. But the uh, but anyway, it's it, I'm starting to see more sequels like that, and I would prefer that to a remake. Yeah. So unless you're doing something like a Candyman remake, where it's not a real remake, right. where it's a retelling, um, with a different vibe and a different energy and it can still be as good i'd like maybe if they do something like that that would be awesome because yeah. well, i don't think it needs a remake no mm-hmm. and, and especially because lou diamond phillips is the force that wants to bring it back and i think uh i saw in 2018 him and jeff Co- is it cober cober him and jeff cober did uh, a big horror convention together to do a reunion on it so and then i, I also saw in researching this that like Paul Shear's podcast, uh, How Did This Get Made, yeah. did a giant, like, sold out screening, uh, like, Q&A, or not Q&A, like, a po- live podcast of it in Boston a few years ago. So it, it's got some love. Wow. And it, to me, it's kind of one of those movies like Halloween 3 where, you know, it's it's found its audience and it's growing and it's growing and it's coming back to pop culture. So I personally would love if, like, one of the repertory theaters in LA would screen it because I think this would be bonkers to see with an audience. I think it'd be a really cool screening. It would be it would be wild. People would lose their shit. <laughs> I'd go. <laughs> I, I would make you go. I know you would. <laughs> I'd be like, come on, guys. Do it for Lou Diamond Phillips. I mean LDP. LDP. <laughs> Don't LDP. <laughs> you know me. Uh well, funny enough, uh in my research, aka IMDB trivia, uh, this was Easy E's favorite movie. Ah, um, do with that what you will. Thank you, Internet, for that gem. You're like, this validates everything I've ever <laughs> thought in the world. Thank you, Easy E. It's just thank, a- thank you, Easy E. Thank you, Easy. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, it's it, there's not I mean it has this movie is older, obviously. It's not like we're gonna be spoiling something that is uh right coming on to the yeah, nineteen ninety was the year, so yeah, shield, so- but She's uh, retro. She's she retro. Aged she's vintage. Like <laughs> some kind of wine. <laughs> like one of those cheeses. Like it's farms. a palette. It's a palette. You have to have a certain palette for yeah. it. So she aged like moonshine. Just you know what? This is my recommendation. Get yourself a forty. Get a little weed. Yes. Turn off all the lights yes. and go to Tubi. I just watch it's a good movie. time, man. It's fucking fun. It's a good time. <laughs> this is the channel that we are we're not saying this uh 
on online. Get yourself a Capri Sun and a Lunchable and uh, no, a we, bunch of sugar. We have to no. pay them now. <laughs> we have to pay Capri Sun. No, like, pay no. Capri Sun shit. You don't know anything. <laughs> Fuck you, I'm Capri Sun. I'm just saying, Sun. get yourself some delicious snacks and beverages that make you feel good on the inside and put on this movie yeah. and just see what comes of your evening. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> let, let's, let's like dive into it. So, I mean, it this came out like what, I, I can't do math. 1990 to now. Is that like 30 years? So that's 34, um, 34, years. 34 years. Are 34 we years. diving into spoilers? We now? sure are. Spoilers. So yeah, if, if you haven't seen it and you want to, Turn this off. Go watch it. Come back and join us after for a really exciting deep dive into the first power. Grab, your, grab yourself a chair. Grab a chair. Come so, on down. Hang on with down. that, Diama. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man. Yeah. I, I thought it was hilarious, by the way, because I watched this. La- I mean, I think yesterday was the only time we could really, you know, see it between yesterday and today with our schedules. And I just... <laughs> I just got the text from you like, boy, are you in for a treat? Because I said I was watching it last night and I told her, uh, I forget the part that I was watching, but you, you texted me and you're like, we're watching the same exact part. <laughs> so yeah, her, like- we were watching the same part at the same time. It's like we had like done a live watch together or something. It was crazy. That was that's Mystic May for you. <laughs> like <laughs> Mystic means everyone touches into their touch touches touches. Did I mean to say I don't like touching? Everyone Ooh. touches their mystic parts. <laughs> I don't think you meant to say that at all. I hope did I? Okay. I didn't think you meant to say that while making eye contact with me. Did I? <laughs> I did. Uh. So, like, so this movie starts like in the heart of the action. Like shit is already going down. Like this Richard Ramirez as killer named Patrick is already on the loose killing people. Lou Diamond Phillips and his, like, crack team of detectives are doing stakeouts. Yeah. Like, near, like, Griffith Park, uh, trying to catch him. And Lou Diamond Phillips gets this, like, sexy phone call from a strange lady. See, now that was... That had made-for-TV 90s written all over it, because I thought about, like, Lisa, and like, I just thought about all those sexy, like, silk stockings 90s shows, because it's just the lips. It's just the lips. I actually like that shot, though, of yeah. her just the lips talking. And um, but what did bother me is I was like, why is she wearing red lipstick? And then she's not going to wear red lipstick uh, for the rest of the movie. I was like, no, no, what the hell? Because she had her lip close up. Yeah, I know. but like. She should have. She, she should have worn yeah. red lipstick at least one right. other time. She Maybe I have. missed it, but I was kind of like yeah. that. I don't believe it's the same woman. I'm sorry. Maybe like, I just I just don't. Because yeah. she should have been. I don't know. I was expecting more of like. A siren, yeah. and then I was like, "Oh, yeah. hey, mom!" Like, <laughs> hey, granted, mom. no, she's she's super super cute, but she's super cute in Girl Next Door, and I was expecting like vampy. noir, vampy, yeah. like she's she struts in wearing an air of mystique, <laughs> like. <laughs> well, and she being Tess, the character Tess, who, by the way, is played by Melanie Griffith's sister, which oh, is how she got okay. the job. <laughs> well, she's a beautiful, cute little redhead. And maybe that is, is that really though literally how she got the job? Or do you I have know? no fucking idea. Oh, well. Nepo. Nepo. Uh, Nepotism. I know she doesn't have a lot more credits other than that, right? Really? I don't no. think so. I, but I mean, to be honest, I think maybe in the movie being so over the top, she was the, she was the psychic and I felt like she was the most real character right. out of all of them. I, I was like, y'all need to tone down to the psychics level because yeah. she's the only one who I believe oh, yeah. right now. Everyone else is Everyone Bonkers. else is like going for Oscars or something. Oh they're not realizing what movie they're in. I wish they went for Oscars, man. But uh. so okay, they're they're doing this stakeout, and she calls and she's like, "He's gonna strike again," and blah blah blah. And you know, then there's Lou Diamond Phillips and his partner in the car, who is Bubba Gump. Um, I didn't even realize he was until later on. Really? That joke. I made a joke. Well, okay. Since this is spoiler territory, this means you already saw it or you don't care. But there is a a dying scene at some point, and I made a joke saying, you know, that's some Bubba Gump and Forrest Arms, you know, Forrest oh, Gump's man, arm shit. And I had no idea that was him. It's like the same shot. It's the same shot. And he did the same exact way. You know. Well, he just he's like, this is what I'm good at. This is my best angle. And we're yeah. gonna do this again. Hey, you know what? Praise you. Praise but so you. he's both of them are far too young to be playing these like hard boiled like alcoholic cops. Like nineties were a tough time it, to be in the PD. Yeah, like is it, yeah. In his, like jacket. I, 
I was, yeah, I, I wrote a note in my head because I didn't have a pen or paper. But in my head, the note that I wrote was Lou Diamond Phillips. Is it me or do you guys agree? Does he look like he's like an adult from here, but then he's a child here? And he looks like a child wearing his, a dad's, you know, giant like David Byrne talking heads, like giant suit. Well, I mean, those trench coats were popular at the time. I know my mom wore them. Um, I know. <laughs> I know. She wore them with mini skirts. It was fucking stupid. But Your mom's a whore. Why is she like- <laughs> That's another episode. It's called therapy. But yes. <laughs> No, I wish my mom was a whore. My mom was a prude. Oh my god, we could have gotten our we should have gotten our moms together. That was we could have fixed each other. Are you kidding me? I want to wear that. Now. I know. I was like, is this coming back? I kind of. I hope not. I want, I'm going to get well, a trench coat. Challenge accepted. Yeah. It sucks to be you. Next time, I'm just going to show up in a trench coat. Oh god. <laughs> you god, today. I hope so. But yeah, so you know, he's he's on. He, they find the killer up in Griffith Park. By the way, love it. It's all real locations in LA. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fucking love that. I want to go visit every single one. Oh, yeah. I want to Airbnb that house. Oh, it's the stall that- house. The stall house? It's like a big uh, architectural like masterpiece in LA. Because oh. it's gorgeous. It was it's giving amazing. 60s. Yeah. I mean, yeah. tons of movies have shot there. Okay. Like, tons. And it's funny because like every... Every single one shows that angle of the pool and you automatically are like, oh, that's, that's oh. the fucking place. Like, I'm going to make though. it my fucking – I'm going to make it my thing to find all these movies that have shot and I want to – so I'm going to clip these because that? I love that pool. I love that house. Was that the house, that Wes Craven's house in New Nightmare? No. Oh. No. Um, I'm trying to think. It, we'll f- I, I, I will it's find in, them. Um, a galaxy quest. It's Tim Allen's house. Oh, gosh. I know it's I know it's in other movies too, but those are the two so I can think of. Uh, but I will say, like, I, I did love all the L.A. ness of it, um, which is great when you watch movies and you're like, oh, that's L.A., but not in a way where you're like, that's L.A. and they're pretending that right. it's <laughs> or like, yeah. hey, we need Oklahoma. to be in the valley in 10 minutes. And they're like all the way in Santa Monica, which if yeah. you don't know L.A. geography, that's not. But, so, not but it it's, it's all real L.A. locations. I love that. But like, you know, he finds the killer like catch because the killer is like somehow captured one of the undercover female cops and is about to kill her and. It's like Lou Diamond Phillips catches him and they have this like showdown and then like he stabs him a bunch of times in the stomach. But then Lou Diamond Phillips gets the best of him. And he's like, you motherfucker. And he goes like all like Amanda Plummer hitting him in the head, like pounding his head. But like, I just love the, the delivery of that one line where he's like, I'll get you motherfucker. Every last one of ya. I also feel like 90s movies told me that I was going to survive a lot more stabbings to the yeah. gut and now i'm like i yes. think that that's actually like really bad yeah yeah i don't that's, think that's science and anatomy says that that things should not be stabbed there it's like, it's, yeah it's giving manhunter <laughs> <laughs> like i don't think everyone survives those but no. you know in the 90s you did so i know yeah. we're teaching kids just like get stabbed no if you're gonna get stabbed right here definitely right the best here, place off to the side in I mean, one of these organs you need to live that's definitely the best place to do it billy loomis <laughs> um billy but loomis. can oh, yeah. we can we talk about the thing that bothered me and that i couldn't get over for like the rest of the movie is why the fuck is he wearing a mask of his own face and then putting it I know, on i know because at first i was confused okay so like he was wearing the mask in the get and then he takes the mask off and i was like is he having a reaction? Like, I thought yeah. there was something. I was like, I don't understand what was going on. Like, that the ma- his face then looked like a mask. But maybe it's because I was confused because he was just, like, I, my brain was like, no. why? why? It is a mask of his face, right? I didn't. I thought it was, at first I thought it was like Nixon or something, but painted blonde. No, she looks no. like him. Like, oh my God. And, and then, then he he's puts putting, it on her, but yeah, then he takes it off of yes. her. That's what I was also confused. I was like, so you're, I don't know what you're about to do to her, but why does she need to have your face? Like, is this a fetish thing? I was kind of like, I, I don't know if I'm into this. His backstory made it sound, they made it sound like he's all sorts of fucked up and yeah. like, I don't know. Yeah, I, I definitely think it was like based off some like Richard Ramirez esque shit. Speaking of Richard Ramirez, did you know that Lou Diamond Phillips played Richard Ramirez in 2016? No. Yep. Because, yeah, we were watching it and, and I was thinking, you know what? He looks like he would have played a really good Richard Ramirez, but that seems so recent in time for him to play Richard Ramirez because he's older, a little older than Richard Yeah, Ramirez. but he, he's a silver fox. He can do anything. Oh, no. So we found this website called Masks and Beats by Vin. And he made some? He made a very limited run. Um, 
and it's an Australian um, effects artist. He just makes masks and instrumental beats, but it's like horror masks. And he made uh, like a Texas Chainsaw masks, uh, Slipknot, like classic. But it um, apparently he only made two and it was sold out. So, so two people bought have these masks. But, you know, if you guys want to contact him and buy us one of those masks for our ever-growing set, yes. we would not hate that. No, we would... Uh... We would love to have that on our set and have Anna get uh, frustrated with us sometimes and put it on <laughs> and try to get the ceiling fan off. And grab the ceiling fan. <laughs> I'm going to ceiling fan the fuck out of you bitches if you don't fall in the line. Is that her new thing when she gets frustrated? I'm going to ceiling fan you. I mean, okay, that's the other thing that I will hunt because it actually had to do with the mask as well. He pops out of this <laughs> hotel room. With a mask, which I was like, all right, this is very Texas Chainsaw a little bit, just like popping out a door. But then he rips a ceiling fan out of the ceiling quite easily, uh, which like, you know, it looks like a a, a trashy, like falling apart hotel. So fine. But then he turns it on. I'm completely unplugged and starts going at them. Is it his satanic power? Pa- his like it's the fourth powers? power. It's, it's the fourth. Power. <laughs> the one that was not listed is the it's modern day the power. power. <laughs> it wasn't in the original text because it's you know fans didn't exist back then oh that were God. electric powered. But apparently, it's the power to control electrical devices <laughs> is the secret one that they that'll be in the sequel. May <laughs> I uh, please go back though and address the biggest standout moment? Well, second biggest. There are three. Yeah, yeah, we gotta go. We gotta like there's rewind so much. this. Shit. There's so much to unwrap, and I cannot stop thinking about. Like I said, the 4K. They were not prepared for 4K, and right in the beginning, in the gas chain. Oh, cause oh wait, oh yeah, yeah. Oh my Back gosh, we got up. so okay. Wow, it's okay. We got excited. We got ahead of ourselves. Y'all are oof. all right. So, LDP, my bro. I uh, after he gets stabbed in the stomach, they capture the killer Patrick, and then he goes to trial. And he's like, how's the stomach, buddy boy? Buddy boy. And, you know, and like the sidekick is like, whatever you do, don't give him the gas chamber. Don't kill him. Ma, no death penalty. Yeah. And apparently the death penalty in, in uh, California is like a day later. Yeah, that was that was weird. And then like putting them in a gas chamber. And I was like, oh, Jesus. The oh, best man. thing in the world came out of that. And that was I don't, was this supposed to be. The first of the weird dream logic, or yes. did this actually happen? No, in real it was life? a dream. Okay, so yeah, he dies, quote unquote, and then he has these aftershocks. But then he suddenly reanimates and he jumps through the window. Do a favor and um, have your paws ready. And when he jumps out the window, just pause it because that ain't him. <laughs> He very clearly is his stunt double. And we had to rewind it and be like, that doesn't even look remotely like it was such a clear shot of this other dude with another frame. And he was like orange. Because he's wearing the mask. No. no but yeah. No. It was, I love the stunts in this movie. I, but the, the one, not the one thing. I, there's not the one thing. One of the things that bothered me was the the way that the dreams were. I was just like, okay wait, this was all a dream, but like it was, it happened like too many times. I don't know this. That one is one where I was like, so did the whole thing was a dream? Was part of it a dream? Did he not die in a yeah. gas chamber? Was he not there? But then like at the, after that they're celebrating his death it, with champagne in the cop station was like, why are these cops getting drunk on the jab? But like one of the funniest things after that is like, so after the gas chamber thing, like Lou Diamond Phillips like jumps up in bed and someone clearly like throws a cat. <laughs> like he was like, that, damn it, Jack! And I was like, the cat just like the cat's was, like Meh. that was cat stock sound number two because in the first scene after he's talking to the psychic, the cat goes Ear! and like jumps off, and then all of a sudden he wakes up, the cat goes. Meh! But it's like it's clearly someone's just sitting there with like a uh, like, <laughs> like yeets his fucking cat. Is that, is that the noise it makes? Yeah. <laughs> well, just, I mean, have you ever had a cat just jump on you while you're sleeping? Because, like, I've I had mean, yes. this dog has done it, like, and it is not fun. Yeah. I mean, I would have a much bigger reaction because normally when a cat jumps on your gut, you're like, what the hell? But it's like, there was clearly, like, it just, like, there was nothing for the cat to jump from. It's just like someone threw it at him. It's just the stock cat noises made everything uh, better. The cat had the fifth power, which yeah. is <laughs> levitation. So there's actually ten powers, and we're going to go through them all. We're going to yeah. find all ten powers. But oh the, the fifth power only applies to animals who have yeah. been gifted by Satan, which cats, uh, that tracks. I mean, that does track. Yeah. That does track. I feel like we don't even get to meet Tess until, like, kind of late in the movie. I feel like it's, like, 20, 30 minutes in or something, right? 
Well, I, but she's supposed to be that mysterious voice on the phone. Yeah. Uh, I I liked her. I thought her introduction made sense where yeah. she's just like, she's getting Still harassed. Parking and, spots. That was, I liked that scene, actually. That <laughs> scene was fun. But also, like, good for her for being an aggressive driver. As they've recently learned, I'm an aggressive driver. Uh, oh, my God. She almost killed us the other day. It was it was a lot. <laughs> there should have been a stop sign for the other people. It didn't make sense no, that there wasn't. Okay. But okay. We got there. We got, we got th- there. Yeah. D- but did you die? So, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm an, I'm an aggressive driver. And so is Tess. So maybe it's a redhead thing. Yeah, um funny. But I also I just really liked uh, I don't know she was the only character I liked in the whole thing. Um, I didn't mind her too much when she gets at her face where she stole the parking spot from that dude in that like red sports car and she's just like I must have missed body. that scene. That oh, was good. Like- she, her attitude I was like okay I like her I don't care about anything else I like her she's I she's a little sassy but she, that little smirk was great because yeah. anytime anytime I over someone who's a dick driver and I get like the best of them oh, for yeah. a second I'm like well that was really yep. satisfying. <laughs> But not just, like, her getting out of the car and then all of a sudden it's this, like, now the parking lot's empty. I was like, oh, this started to feel a little more horror movie for me until up until that point it didn't feel horror movie. It just felt like cop movie. Cop movie. And maybe this is the the, now she's in a dream sequence, but, like, she didn't have to be asleep for it. But this, yeah. And this is before we knew that she was a psychic. So it's kind of it just like, oh, okay. And the parking lot's empty. And no one, it's never fun to be a female in an empty parking no. lot. Nope. So. It is, it's a really creepy scene. Because it's like, hell? you know, oh, she, she gets out of the car. She's all sassy. Like, eh. That's and then exactly. like she looks around. All of a sudden, the parking lot's completely empty when it was full before. Because mm-hmm. she had a steel parking spot. Um, yeah. And then, like, he's just kind of, like, lurking in the shadows. Oh, okay. Maybe I didn't miss and it. And she's <laughs> running away. And then someone saves her from getting hit by a car. Which, frankly, that other person was driving way too fast in a parking lot. You should never be driving fast enough that you could kill someone. And that's that ridiculous. That was very LA accurate, though. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> you know something that doesn't quite make sense? To- I mean, there's a lot of things about this movie that don't make sense. But, like... For somebody like Patrick, our killer, our villain, he wanted to die because he was one of Satan's disciples and he knew somehow that he was going to be granted this first power of resurrection or whatever. I mean, maybe he didn't know. Maybe he's just like, I'm going to risk it for the biscuit. But like, (laughs) like, he wanted this to happen. But then like, for some reason, he's trying to get revenge on the people who did it to him. And I don't quite understand. Like, I'm like, you wanted this. You asked for it. Well, I think that maybe he didn't want to be... I think getting this is like this is my plan if I get murdered, but I got a lot more killing to do, and you kind of got in the way of that. Like maybe That's he's like, fair. I'm not done murdering dames, yeah. broads. They said they called someone. Broads. They called her a broad, yeah. right? They oh, the the broads got the, nice threads or something. The yeah, cops said, oh broad. yeah, because she's she's fancy. She's dressed so nice. Fancy. Broad was a, a word. But yeah, I remember that where I was being like, oh, okay, yeah, this tracks. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he he wasn't done killing broads, and they got in the way of that. And he's like, you know, so I gotta find the end goal is here, but I wanted a little more to my journey. Like, <laughs> my yeah. journey's not over yet. I mean, bless you for trying to make sense of this. Yeah. No, I love it. I love it. But <laughs> I will say, starting with that scene and a lot of the like the Patrick scenes from here on out. There's this really good, like, sound design of these, like, creepy freaking noises. Yeah. And, like, sounds, like, I don't know, it's, like, babies crying and, like, sounds that are backwards and stuff. And, like, it, it definitely creates an eerie element in those scenes. Like, it happens there. It happens in the church and, like, a few other spots, like, throughout. And I, I actually really, really dig that. Yeah. And I love the way that a lot of the scenes with him are filmed. Like, it's all it's all almost like you're seeing it from, like our character's POV Mm. of him and it makes it a little like it's definitely immersive I love Jeff Cover I mean I think he's so underrated I know him from Buffy he played Rack in season six of Buffy I know him we're friends I know him okay he played the warlock that got Willow hooked okay no spoilers spoilers uh hooked on magic no he's a great actor and he's so creepy but you know what character actors like that they thrive they thrive in the business and he deserves it because he's great his voice is kind of hot oh his voice is so hot no no he says to Willow at one point you taste like strawberries (laughs) sorry 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 we we can move on. Okay, so I'm sorry. Tess and LDP finally meet, and 
<laughs> that's that's my my nickname for him. Yeah, We're not going to use his real name. Just going to use L- <laughs> not LDP. the character name. LDP. Uh, Logan. LDP. His name is Logan, right? Yeah. LDP Logan. works. Uh, Russell. Russell Logan. Yeah. Yeah, but he's a cop. It's always Logan. So it's Logan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she's just like, I only talk to Logan. She's like sitting in the interrogation room. And he's just like, what are you, his girlfriend? Ah. And it was like, why didn't she just start the conversation with like, hey, I was the one calling you and I have new information. It was, she was a little dramatic. I mean, she's a Hollywood psychic. I think yeah. she gets to be a little dramatic. She's like, she- the killings haven't stopped, have they, Logan? Stop. And he's just like, I ain't got time for this shit. I'm yeah. out. And then she was like. I told you not to let him die. I warned you on the phone. And he's like, oh, you. Oh, yeah. oh my God. I didn't make the connection. No, that's crazy. But like the funny thing is, it's like every turn where she's like, I'm a psychic and this is why I know this. He's like, no, nah, you can't be. You you were part of his cold or blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, it's like, but you're seeing the same shit she is, right? Like yeah. we're, we're, you're there. You're, you're witnessing it. No, maybe. Well, he didn't believe he was witnessing it. And then the whole time he's like, no, this is. Like, he hears the voice, and yeah. then he's like, what'd you say? And he's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Uh, and then, then there was a voice message on the thing. There were three. No, I must have accidentally deleted it. Like, it's, it's just, yeah. the whole time Turn he's like, nope, logic. nope, yeah. nope. And, uh, like, up into the, like, he's literally seeing things, um, including people that he's like, oh, it's him. And it's like, oh, actually, no, that's just, like, a person that you just let die off a building. Like, whatever. And, and that was the that was the third power or the, uh, being able to be in other pe- possess other people or yeah that, okay so the possession. three powers i think the first one was possession mm-hmm. right the second one was like sight? either clairvoyance or, it was, or yeah, sight it was or seeing the future or something Which is what tess had yes yep and the first power was resurrection mm-hmm. yeah third um, third you, you said first twice i mean the order doesn't really <laughs> matter i don't know if they're like <laughs> on it but yeah there's three powers <laughs> there's in three no particular powers. order um, I know the because the movie is called the first power. I'm pretty sure the first power is resurrection. It is, yeah. Yes, because they they say oh, them backwards. Yes, but they then they bring the it up in the nun. And there was one person who had all three. Oh, we didn't even mention the nun. Oh, oh we Jesus have Christ. not gotten to Sister Marguerite Literally. yet. Oh yeah, because Sister- that's how the movie. That's how the that's movie how it started. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which with like some old white dudes being like. Lady, shut the fuck up. And I will say, though, when they open on the nun in the Catholic Church, I'm like, oh, God, not again. Are people going to think that we're promoting an agenda? Please, not again. Well, we no are religion. all wearing, we are. All I mean, we are, but it's in the name of the theme. <laughs> we're, I, we this, love a theme. This movie did, had, like, barely anything to yes. do with God or the devil. So I was it very is. thankful. <laughs> all right. So there's a psychic. <laughs> yes. So he, like, goes to her house. Yes. And, oh, I also backtrack a little uh, I love like at the police station when he's like you got my number because you're a psychic and she's like no I have a friend that works at the phone oh, yeah. company I have a friend who works at the phone what company does that, what does that mean remember phone companies because phone though? companies yeah. and in 1990 you got those fat ass phone books that you had to go through and there wasn't an actual wasn't it like Pacific Bell or something like call collect I mean but you couldn't just be like I want this I mean I guess could you could you just go and be like I want this dude's phone number and there's if some phone friend, person be like if you hey, had a friend at the phone company I should have I wish everyone had a friend at the phone if company. you had a friend at the phone company then you were hooked up yeah now it's kind of like oh no I got a friend in like a hacker group and I know like, yeah all right cool cool it's <laughs> a phone company god I wish if anyone any hackers want to be my friend <laughs> so yeah so then he goes to her fancy house because he's got a friend at the house company. He's got a friend at the house company. Like I love, I love his police work. Like he just does what he wants. That's that's what an LDP cop does. Man, nineties were a time. It they was. Were. I feel like he's like twenty. Like he's twenty one Jump Street. I feel like he's just I, yeah. straight he's, out. Of- he's playing by his own rules. Like him and his partner Bubba Gump. Go. Bubba Gump. <laughs> just, <laughs> Lieutenant <laughs> Bubba Gump or <laughs> Officer Gump. <laughs> they go into her house. And they're like, oh, this is a swanky pad for a psychic. I mean, it is a, a it is a swanky pad. Oh, no, he, sa- he says he's like, I guess I should be a psychic because this pad's so swanky. I should, I'm in the wrong line of work. And then he's like, you wouldn't look good in a turban. Yeah, I was oh. like, what is that line? What is that line? I mean, I'm glad that they're not white dudes saying that shit, but still. <laughs> that is true. That is true, but that's a little... uh. 
I, don't I mean, know. they're referencing like the David Letterman sketch. Right. I'm assuming. Yeah. Or was that David the, Letterman who the, who did the thing or where there's like a Zoltan or something? Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. And then like he's like, too bad she doesn't have a view. <laughs> but her house was gorgeous. Her house is stunning. Oh, yeah. I love the '60s. I love the um the terracotta <laughs> cutout thing. Why well, they have a name, but I can't remember the name of them. But I've always wanted oh, one. Yeah, and yeah. to know that that house is like. Probably 20 minutes, 15 minute yeah, drive I mean, that way. That, Don't dox yourself. That's one of my favorite things about this movie is that I feel like we could get in someone's car right now, not Kay's car. <laughs> not Kay, you're not driving. <laughs> and go to like all of these locations. Like they all still exist. I seriously looked up like the church across from Alvarado Street or whatever. And I was like, oh, yep, that's oh, there. Yeah. Like, I love her. Uh, so they go in there, but they're trying to find. Do they? Th- I forgot. Did they think at the time that she was still part of like a cult? Or yes. they're trying to just. No, prove- they're like, she's definitely right. part of this. She's helping him. She's yeah. his like yeah. Bonnie to his Clyde or whatever. Okay. And uh, and we're gonna we're gonna figure it all out. That sweet ass IBM <laughs> computer. Oh my god! Or- then they like turn on her computer and like they test his Oracle. And, like, she's got, like, star it. charts and stuff. Oh, that, maybe I should design my website to look like that. You I, should. And then stock you'd be a tips. celebrity psychic. And stock tips. She I had mean, stock tips and, like, game scores, I think. Oh, she, I she had sports scores and stock tips because that's all that psychics do is they well, predict. In the 90s, too, it was all about, like, stock, stock, well, stock. She says yeah. something, too, like, um... I could let you know if your pilot's going to get picked up or something. Oh, like yeah. The cele- the, no wonder she has a house like that. Celebrity psychics? Probably makes a bank per hour. And then, like, he goes through her answering machine. And it's like, you know, people hi- try. There was like one call was like someone trying to hire her, and the next was like some guy that was like, Tess, you're just too spooky for me. Peace. If I had a I nickel. couldn't handle it. I'm too chicken shit to handle it or whatever. It's like, oh, at least he admitted it. Good on him. Yeah. Yeah. Let's stand up. At least yeah. he's that being is real. true. He has, that is true. Yes. I applaud. Good guy in the film. Good guy. Second favorite character. <laughs> he's gonna be. He's gonna be in the sequel. <laughs> Let's give him a name. Charles. Carl. 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 My I'm, second favorite character is answering machine guy. I've never been a Carl that I like, so he could be Carl. 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 You don't like Carl. <laughs> Carl. Walking Dead. <laughs> I also hmm. love when like. Like, so while they're in her house, she's, like, on the street with, like, one of the other detectives tailing her. And she, like, pops out and surprises him. Oh, and, yeah. She's, like, know. dumpster lady in Mall and Drive. Just, like, <laughs> behind the dumpster. Just, like, jumps out. But she's, like, I can tell from your aura you're lying. And I'm, like, does it work like that? Can you, does people's auras have, can you tell if they're lying? I mean, I don't, I'm sure there are some people who could clearly see an aura at all times. But, you know, some auras are muddled. They're a little cloudy. You got a little. You got a little yellow right now. I feel a little bit of yellow. Rude. You got a little like a uh, bluish gray, but gray gray is because you're probably very tired and frozen. You know, I kind of feel like I just have like, like what's the the fucking kid from Peanuts with like the dark cloud over his head? <laughs> <laughs> like that's just me. All mud, time. That's mud, what I think. Which Eddie is, is my dog uh, Pigpen. Pigpen. That's I am Pigpen. <laughs> Uh, but I think she could just tell that that guy's vibe was off, which is worked out because he ends up getting murdered. So, yeah. you know, bad vibes all around. I was bad trying vibes. to think of a movie he was in. I think it was a horror movie, but he I think he was a cop, too. But he was a sleazy guy. He's like, hey, yo, girl. Like, oh, my God. It's going to drive me crazy. Cause... Broads. Bro- broads. Broads. Yo. Your threads. The like, threads that cover up your stems. I love when she, like, shows up at her house. She's not even like, how did you guys get in? She's just like, you're going to die. She sees, like, they change mm. on his, like necklace and she's like you're in danger <laughs> but but let's go chase a serial killer who's undead but honestly that takes us to one of the best scenes of the movie this like chase through like the santi area yeah uh, alvarado street or something yeah um, like by the church and it's like the first time we get to see him jumping bodies you literally no joke texted me when you're like uh, uh look at that demonic horse carriage and then i look up and literally the horse carriage comes out i'm like Emma? <laughs> but yeah, like that was the first thing that we like he does. Bubba gets out and like all of a sudden there's like this fucking horse that's like trampling on him and killing him. <laughs> like did he possess the horse? Is that it, what happened? I, the third power is not specific. He could possess whatever he wants. He possess, it's just possess yeah. a body. Anything corporeal. He could possess a whole body of water if he wanted, maybe. I don't know. You don't Ooh. you don't know how these rules go. I oh. just I I 
I did not know that was Bubba Gump. And, and then he was dying. And, I also, and also don't think his LBP's. name is Bubba Gump. We're I think that's the name Bubba of the restaurant. Okay. I know. I worked there for three years. Thanks. Uh, I know all the trivia about him. His name is M- McKelly. M- M- no, I don't think we Bubba thought Gump? that his name was Bubba Gump in the movie. <laughs> I want to call him Bubba. Because uh, he's great. But he was dying in, in uh, LDP's arms. And I look over. I'm like... And I texted you. I was like, that's some Bubba Gump uh, force dying shit. And then I, I thought you knew. No, I didn't. And then I looked it up. I was like, oh, that's actually Bubba Gump. That's, or that Bubba. That's actually. But he, how do you pronounce his name? He deserves to be called by his actual Tracy real name. Tracy Griffith? No. Isn't that him? Yes. Detective him. Oliver Franken? Mm-hmm. His, his real name is above it. Williamson? My, as Michael. Williamson. Michael. Michael. Uh, I believe it's Michael T. Williamson, Detective Oliver Franklin. That's that's actually his character's name. It's not Bubba. I'm going to just stick with Bubba. Cause... But we are, for this for simplicity's sake. We'll... I do okay. think that he's a lovely actor. I love him. Um, but yeah, so he dies. Then we've got LDP chasing uh, Patrick through this like crowded area. And he's like <laughs> swapping bodies and shit. I, I'm just giving you guys a play-by-play of the movie at this point because oh, yeah. I'm so tired. Um, I but I really like this scene. I love the way that it's shot. Yeah. I love all the action sequences. I love oh, yeah. like all of it. Just feels like we're seeing everything from like LDP's like point of view, and I just it's I like it. It's very much like I'm like yeah, I'm part of this action baby. And this is when they're in the the water. Bar- no, this is when they're like in the Santee area, and uh, then they end up at the top uh, of the building. Y- yeah, yeah. And then the, we get this fucking great stunt. Where I don't even think the building looks that tall, but when from the other way it does, I don't know if it's the same building or if they shot it somewhere else, but they have like an actual like giant stunt of a guy like doing this great graceful swan that, dive. Off the I mean, room. there there are a lot of building jumps in this movie. There are so many swan dives. And this might be my favorite because this is the one that's like action music, action music, action music. He gets to the ground. It's like. And he does a little like <laughs> he just like little, little, little goblin little, like, little dog feet like and he does his little like creepy wave thing. <laughs> good on him. Good on good on him. <laughs> and then we go to the church and I like when he does his little like Jesus wept kind of thing. Oh yeah, it's actually kind of creepy. <laughs> you guys, okay. there's so many like fucking what do you call those like tumbles, like handsprings oh, or something, like, samurai somersaults. Yeah, or like, gymnastics. There's even. so much gymnastics. Like he he is a very acrobatic demon, or <laughs> just showing off. He really seventh power. Seventh, seventh power seventh gymnastics power is gymnastics and showing them off. <laughs> he would have been in Cirque. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Oh maybe that's God. maybe they don't need a sequel. They just need a Cirque show. Maybe they but should. I and love that, just, like, uh, after he sees all this shit, he, like, takes the time to be, like, priest in a confessional booth. Is there such a thing as resurrection? Like, what? <laughs> Why are we stopping to do this? Like, When's the time of your last confession? It's been, been too damn long. <laughs> I'm getting too old for this. <laughs> Why are you stopping to, to do a confessional when, when you're seeing a dude jumping off I mean, a building? For the same reason they stop to have a slow motion kiss, but then like don't notice the noises in the background later in the they, movie. Oh my God. Yeah. Wait till we get to that. Cause I've got some shit to say. Well, uh, I think that like, I, I think in general, that's like one of the weird things of, oh, this place is definitely haunted. The, the praying lady got it. She left. You should have just oh, yeah. followed. Uh, right? Sister Margaret. Or Mar- um. No, 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 no. The, no there was just a like praying a, lady who's oh, just the sitting there like, oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I thought it was like, well, that went on too long. But I mean, I feel like the church was just like, I didn't even think we needed it to have. I don't think they, the church was like this background third story that we yeah. didn't end up needing throughout the whole right. thing. I don't think there needed to be a church at all. I would no. have been happy if they just showed up. And at one point, there's a nun like, the, just, you know, for exposition, maybe. I yeah. don't know. But yeah, I don't I agree. I also I want to take a moment to shout out my my favorite bit player in the movie, the hot dog stand guy. Oh, like, hot dog I'm stand just like, guy! It's so weird because they just keep cutting to him, like, and he's just standing there, like he oh, has. Does a he full know on... the camera's rolling. He has a full on scene. 
He does. He's so serious. why are we? Do- <laughs> we like, should have found him as an actor. I want to find out how he got that part. I do. I want to know everything. Let's look up his his. I like maybe. I love like when he's like he's just standing there staring. And he's like, oh sorry, she's got the mental institution. Oh, like, maybe she shouldn't have. Maybe what was she, she should go back. Yeah. He just shakes. Maybe it. she shouldn't have left. <laughs> just I want to see his like I want it to just I really wish the point of view shifted to his. So after they walked away, then you just see him walking home like after a shift, and then he's like, <laughs> honey, you'll never guess what I heard. Today. <laughs> there was this crazy broad. Great threads, though. Um, great great threads. threads. But yeah, uh, but you know, at least they're they're appreciating their extras. Yeah, uh, yeah. That was uh, that was a that was a choice. Yeah. I mean, we're just looking at bullet points now, and the best bullet points. And my favorite one right here is Sister Margaret is a dramatic dick. <laughs> You're welcome. She is. Though. It's like they they take all this time to like. The first time that they go to the monastery or wherever she's at, and like they make this big point of going there, and they knock on the door and they're like, "Sister Marguerite doesn't take visitors," she's and they're like, "It's a it's a spiritual matter," and they're just like, "Wait right here," and she's like, <laughs> and she's like, "I can't help you." And I'm like, "Why do we do this? Why we could probably cut most of Sister Marguerite just out, and it would it would be." The- I mean, she's really there just for the dramatic knife pull. Well, you know what? She just, she's been hurt. She's been shunned by the men of the church telling her not to speak. What was it? Uh, oh, study less about the devil, more about Jesus and modesty. But really, though, if you think, like, it just opens on her being like, I believe he's back. So does she, how does she know, though? Like, did something happen to her? No, she just, she's child. really she's really kept in the news, you know. She's Maybe really she's, yeah, she's got the breast of all of the world. She's got the like the demon network on fucking speed dial or something. Yeah, she called she, she called, called Lady the, Tess. She called Tess a few yeah. times. She used all the the collection money Maybe to call Lady was, Tess. Maybe she was the lips in the beginning. Honestly, that would have been great. That oh my been god, so right? Good. But then, like, oh. I love that after all that, they go, they're like, let's go to his childhood home. Like, why did you not start at his house? Like, why are we doing all these, like, sidetrack things? And then you decide to do real police work and go to his house? Yeah. And, like, they get there and his, like, creepy-ass grandma. She gave off some, like, It Chapter 2 vibes. Like, Actually, the old lady in that. This is going to be, stay with me here for a minute. I was oh, getting some Ray Finkel vibes. Like, have you guys seen Ace Ventura? Oh, they go uh, to his house. Yep. I'm trying so hard not to laugh and blow at the mic really? because I thought about that too, but I didn't say anything because it didn't matter. I was watching. I was like, this this really feels laces out to me. <laughs> like Laces out. Like, they pretend to be, in Ace Ventura, they pretend to be reporters and Courtney or Fox. big fans mm-hmm. or something. And then they go up to the attic where, like, he's, like, scribbled shit all over the walls and, like, made weird videos and everything. Basically, this in a comedy. The scene in a comedy, yes. trying to find the mystery but out. I've seen this movie. You've seen Ace Ventura? <laughs> I, oh, I, I had a somewhat of a childhood, no, like I, a I, little I, bit. I thought you just said you didn't. That's why I no. was, like, explaining it like well, I'm an idiot. I feel yeah. like I've definitely seen this movie, but it's been so long, I just don't yeah. remember. It just, it trigger, yeah, I, I don't know if I would have remembered if it just didn't trigger the memory yesterday. But, like, I was just uh, like, this is the same scene. Yep. <laughs> yeah, this gives me the ick. It's very uncomfortable. I, I I didn't need any of his. Backstory. I didn't need any of his he backstory. Didn't need that. I don't think. I just, I to say, but it just it seems it's overdone. Exactly. And also, it's like oh, anyone who experiences sexual trauma becomes a monster, and right. that's kind of like. Yeah, and I know that in the don't. '90s, that was. It wasn't as, you know, caught upon at the time. But it, so it I, just yeah. also didn't add anything to the it, story. No, it doesn't. No, it was <clears throat> completely unnecessary. Right. All the creepy clowns in this room would make me a fucking nightmare oh to deal gosh. with, too, because they are awful. They were horrible. That was so creepy. But oh my gosh. I was already tuned out at that point. I was just like, <laughs> How I don't want to be here. How did you tune out for the creepy clowns? <laughs> well, because I miss no. the clowns, and that normally is kind of like a thing for me. So I think I, I as soon as, like, the all the story and everything, and I was kind of like, I don't, yeah. But, you uh, know, there was light at the end of the tunnel because they were led to a... Uh, Bill Mosley's tavern. Oh my god! I like we we're watching it last night. I just texted Alyssa, Bill Mosley, and I wasn't there because I had paused it. And all of a sudden, I was like, "Please tell me you're not having like a breakdown." And you just texted Bill Mosley, and that's code for something. Or, <laughs> no, or like because like, I like, but it's weird. Like I, at this point, he'd already been chop top, right? Yes. And so yeah. they just have him standing there with no lines. He's like McGuire. They're like she's like McGuire's McGuire, but she calls him McGuire. Like, yeah, just, he's like I'm yeah, not McGuire. You know, 
he's just obviously Maguire because he works there. Nobody else could work there no, unless it's they Maguire. are Maguire. Yeah. Uh, it's just like, you know, this is more watered down than a Perrier. You and must have a leak in your you must have a leak in your roof because this is more watered down than a Perrier. Oh, yeah. was just That's a like, pretty good line. That's yeah. a pretty she's, fun line. She's the best character in the in the she's the second best character. <laughs> I'm not going to say that next time I go to the bar, just for no reason. But it has to be somebody I know so they know I'm joking and I'm not a dick. Yeah, because then they'd be like, fuck you. That's a, yeah, that's a yeah. raucous accusation. And then I'll think it's funny, but then no one laughs. And they just stare at me I'm like, big gulps, huh? Well, see you later. But, like, it's so, like, this movie it takes so many little side trips. Like, I'm like, it's all over the place. It's like adventures well, and babysitting. But also <laughs> she's like, all you keep talking about is how bad you need a drink. Oh, I need a drink. You're sitting over here drinking a lot. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get in touch with you. Or like, I'm trying to get through, I mean, to, you. through to you. So like he, he's a drunk. So you're like, maybe you'll listen to me if I am also wasted. Listen, I was I like, what's, say. what is this logic? But he doesn't even drink. She's the only one drinking. My tarot readings are so much better when I have wine. <laughs> I she wasn't. It. She was just like, because you under, because you tried to charge me for this, I'm taking the bottle. And it was like, dang, lady. Okay, she's ballsy. She's not I like dressed her. enough to be a rebel. She's like dressed too mom to be a rebel i don't know she's she's fun it works she's for cool. her no, i like her that's, that's how you become a good rebel is because you're so unassuming and she just looks so girl next door yeah. and she's like but i'm girl next door down hair, the train tracks her hair got wilder and wilder as it went on so it's like crimped towards the end i'm like yeah. ooh, you're a bad girl you're a bad you girl have, now. you have crimped hair you know i love that they they like the whole fucking middle of the movie is just to lead up to establishing the big end scene at the water uh facility it's like, okay, we're sitting on this Chekhov's water valve. Oh, we you didn't can't be talk- in here. Well, what about, uh, there's also, we didn't even mention oh. how there was a, if you're an L.A. native and you saw this movie and you're like, hey, there's water in the L.A. River. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's so sad. Yeah. Was, I didn't even reckon that. I mean, you, there's so many movies have shot in the L.A. River and it's actually kind of, I hardly yeah. ever see movies shoot in the L.A. River when there's actually water in it. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty. It's crazy. I mean, that, yeah. that guy giving the exposition on the, well, it hasn't been working for this long. That that gave me a Jason Takes Manhattan vibe. Oh yeah, it was the toxic was just sludge like, <laughs> comes out. Because you know every every uh, water facility in LA definitely uh, probably really does have toxic sludge. We yeah. would be remiss though if we didn't mention the real MVP of this movie. Oh, which one is that? That would be. Are we there? I I, I think so. We're okay. almost. There. Are we? Oh, we've got oh wait, go, no. we're gonna do uh, hotel built more. Y'all gotta get. Uh, we gotta give you the hot goss on this whole bullet point <laughs> list because you won't you won't survive without we will, it. We so. will add my my. Uh, Please do. Yes. Oh, no, we talked. We talked about. We talked about the hotel because we talked about the fan. Oh, and we yeah. talked about, uh, But that was the Biltmore. Yeah, the, or uh, Baltimore. The Baltimore. Oh. And I don't know about you guys, but <laughs> when probably like ten or so years ago, a lot of those places down there, like the Cecil. The Baltimore, the Alexandria, they were all putting ads on Craigslist. This was like before apartments.com or whatever to be like beautiful downtown LA lofts for only $600 a month. And I was, I fucking went and looked at one because I was like, oh, oh. and then you get there and it still looks like, you know, a, a flop house like it does in this. I'm like, well. Did you just feel the just depression and the depravity when you were there it was terrifying i went in and i was like oh well i was looking for an apartment at the time i was like i want to live in downtown la and then i looked at two places down there one was above like a weird like porn distribution center (laughs) and that one that was definitely where you know drugs live and i love la yeah gotta love la i love la ghosts are it's true. But, it's very true. Yeah. So after after they do the 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 fan, which is really one of the highlights, and, yes. then, and then after all of that, they are in the mood. So instead of going back to her like really nice mansion, like aphrodisiac of a house, yeah, he he takes her back to his like gross ass apartment with a very small bed. I'm surprised the cat bed. didn't pop out at some point. <laughs> Rare. Rare. Like, like, yeah. The <laughs> But yeah, they that was the most awkward, forced, we're going to kiss now. Because I was fully expecting one of those really like slow motion 90s like sex scenes that just yeah, like I go in and out. Honestly, just, yeah. I would have loved, I would have loved if they were fucking and then the MVP character of the movie is like in the background. Oh my God. If, if oh, I we ever. Haven't, we haven't gotten there yet. If I ever get the chance to remake this movie, Please that's going watching in. it the whole time. Yes. Like, lucky for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so like you know they're getting all like cozy in front of this be- wind- giant window like, three sa- like all the sounds <laughs> yeah there's all these like sounds by the music oh it's just my refrigerator and, then, and, and meanwhile we're re- Remember that earlier he had this like vision where his whole apartment was covered in blood, but you know, it, it's just the refrigerator, baby. Yeah, he's kind of, he's really giving dad in a haunted house movie vibes oh, yeah. of like all this horrifying stuff is happening specifically to him. And he's yeah. like, nope, yep. I don't know what you're talking about. Yep. This is not, I paid a lot of money for this apartment. It's definitely not haunted by the demon guy that wants <laughs> also, to murder me. He just wants to get his dick wet. He I mean, sure like, does. He sure does. I'm sorry, but when, when Bonin is on the table, you'll be like, shh. It's okay. <laughs> and, and at this point of the movie, okay, in one day, in one day, his partner got trampled by a demon horse. Uh, his boss got hung from the 6th Street Bridge like Jesus. Uh, I think he... Somebody else gets killed, right? That he works with. Like, don't you? Oh, yeah, the, the undercover killed. cop girl, woman is killed in the get. Yeah, yeah, and didn't they kill the cop guy that was... He no, was no, 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 that's not... Or? No, that's after. Oh, is but it? Like, anyway, so oh. he sees, like, three people he knows get killed. Uh, they're being chased by, like, a, this demonic, satanic first power guy. But he's going to stop and make out with her in front of a window and ignore her noises... I'm su- sure, bro. I'm surprised they didn't try to get into a backstory of him like he lost his wife a year ago. And this is one year ago today. One year ago today, exactly. To a oh gas chamber. No, but I think that uh, sleazy hotels just have that effect on you. They, really they were in like that sleazy drug den of a hotel. He's like, you know what else they do in these hotels? <laughs> Whole lot of fucking. <laughs> <A lot of laughs> fucking. <laughs> They get into it, you know, when when the mood strikes, you got to follow it. You got to go with it. You got to you got to go. What's your favorite side note? What's your favorite demonic horse this one or the uh Hello Mary Lou? Horse? I was I mean, I I cannot fucking wait for us to get to that movie. You, have you seen Hello Mary Lou? You were going to love it. I swear to you, you were going to love it. I don't know. She's, you, no. you're, you're one strike down with this <laughs> no, no, no. She, She's going to no. be like your idol. This is, okay. such, a, this is such a it's side It kind of gives of, like these vibes. Yes, yeah, such a oh, I'm so but excited. But it's, so it's incredible. Okay. Yes. Anyway. Okay. So MVP of the movie. Somebody else take it away. It's Carol Kane. No, oh, it's God, really not Carol it's Kane. Not. But she does give uh, off some Scrooged vibes. It's uh, the... It's the bag lady. Oh, yeah. They so, call her the so bag when, lady. When they, <laughs> she doesn't get a name. She's she's unhoused. So they're just like, it's the bag lady. She shows up out of nowhere. And it's like, as they're walking into his building, we should have we'll reversed a little. They see her like a, a, a homeless woman, like, sleeping by the side of the building. And so, like, you know, they've, they've set her up a little bit. But all of a sudden, she just flies, like actually <laughs> flies. Oh, she just <laughs> shows up and then she pops back down. She she had a blast. She like <laughs> pops up at the window and is like, "Hey, like a trampoline or something." <laughs> and then goes away, and then she's just, oh, and, and then she comes just, back up and she starts doing like she's acrobatics say, in the pool. Yeah. I will say that little spinny she does is a little creepy. It's no, but I love that creepy. she's just like time of her life, like she's wicked so witch laughing yep. this whole time. Oh. Oh I'll get God. you, my pretty. No, but what, and then she's like, "Don't, don't you think I'm pretty?" Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so she bursts through the window the and she attacks glass, them. The clear sugar glass. <laughs> I want to be that stunt woman on that. Like, they were just like, just get up there and be creepy. And she's like, nah, I'm a spin. (laughs) I'm a a spin. spin. She she spins in the air. She does somersaults. She does like a back handspring. Oh, yeah. She's a really good stunt woman. Lots of gymnastics because that's the sixth power is gymnastics. gymnastics. I can't keep track of all of our powers, but one of them is gymnastics. Yes. We'll Well, make an official document. I love her so much. And I was like, Really hoping to get like texts from all of you as you got to that part of the movie. I actually only wrote two notes for the entirety of this movie. And <laughs> one of the notes like... was Bag Lady is the best. And that's <laughs> that was the second note. And after that, I had no notes. Uh, can we have a candle of her? Just uh, hanging yes. out. Just, uh, I want I an wrote... action figure that we can hang from here and we just like hit her every yes. once in a while. So she just goes, <laughs> I wrote Bag Lady is MVP. <laughs> she really is. Yeah. Um, which takes us to my next bullet point that car crash rules it's so well done like that is such a good practical stunt that like the stunts were 
for as wacky as this movie is, then all of a sudden you'll get to the stunt work like that, like the just the car crash. Like that was I can't tell if it's too epic for this movie or if it was perfect. Like if it was the way it should be. It was really good. It was like, so good. Maybe the script was just stunts and they had to fill a storyline around it. Well, they just threw Thank God they didn't close it. up all of them because there's some space ball shit going on with the stunt double. Oh like, yeah, at one point doubles. like I definitely saw like a like a dummy roll off of a car. Yeah. Like, like that is definitely a dummy. That is it not must, a person. Must have been so nice. To oh wait, him. I actually really like the guy in the car. Um, oh, we forgot him. Where he was great. Where he's like, I'm. I. You know what? I'm not oh anti cop. You can do what you got to do. And then like, is it him yes. that was kicking? Because it definitely wasn't the guy driving, and it didn't look like a woman's foot that kicked. Um, that kicked him when he was on the hood with yeah. like the mask. Oh my gosh, and, that's right. That random and, like extra. The, or he's the, like got like, middle seat. He, they didn't throw him out, which I love. Yeah, he's yeah. just in the middle. I would like <laughs> good thing. Good thing for this movie. They really, if you got like a small part in it, you got a part though, because yes. hot dog guy, hot dog car guy, guy and hot. then he's like, call this dude, and this, and then he gets, he gets to like end his yeah, scene like, and everything. Okay, sir. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, try to start. It car. almost looks like it's like a. Um, he's like anytime. It, for, yeah, it's like a corporate video. It's like okay. Thank you for your... Thank you. Thank I actually you. hope that, like, him and Hot Dog Guy are <laughs> yes. married and Hot Dog Guy comes home and is like, "Hun, you will never believe. He's like, you will oh never believe. My. Our car is totaled, but you won't believe how. That I would be part of a police chase today. Can can that sequel please happen? Oh, please my God. Do it. Please do it. And, like, I it. love when he's like, yeah, call, like, Lieutenant so-and-so. Actually, and call like, this guy. Dies in the next scene. So what's this What's this poor guy going to do about his car now? <laughs> Who is going to help him? <laughs> this poor... Just yeah, actually, make the sequel because I want I want his ending that he deserves. <laughs> is that what? he got to be part yeah. of a police chase and his car gets repaired? We'll follow up. We'll post something with both of their actors' names and yes. just like dedicate this. Yes. Find them on Instagram. Find them on social media and interview. You're them. our favorite. You and Bag Let's Lady. Have a live commentary with them. Oh my god, please. Uh, okay, well we're getting close to the end, guys. We go back to Sister Marguerite and her like best fucking moment. Why didn't they do like some stinger, just some music sting? Did they? When she just takes out that badass crucifix dagger? No, because it was a line. It was like, I know someone else who had all three powers. Jesus! Jesus Christ! Christ. What's, um, <laughs> what's the movie with uh, the Jesus musical? Oh, Rock, rock Me Jesus. Rock, Rock Me Jesus. Rock. Oh my gosh. No. Oh my gosh! Okay, no what that's what I right. thought it was gonna bust into, but uh, that's gonna drive me crazy. No, but that was definitely like a cheesy after-school special line, or like something yeah. very much out of *Refer Madness*. Yeah, you know who else doesn't do drugs, kids? <laughs> Jesus, Jesus! I love when she's like, Shh, and like it's so posed. What oh if? My God. What if she had more to do, and like she was supposed to be the the uh, protagonist, and she was like really excited about it, but they cut all of her shit oh out or changed it? What do you? What would you do? Oh. I feel like this is like the moment where this film descends into like Nightmare on Elm Street Dream Child with like Down to the soundtrack. I mean, I kinda like some of the soundtrack. No, the soundtrack's great. But I hear a lot of Dream Master and Dream Child influences yeah. in some of those. Music I actually kinda cues. heard like it was a little like John Carpentery. I know I read yeah. Stuart Copeland from the police did the music for this movie. No. Yeah. But like I feel like you have like like John Carpenter kind of like plays like a theme and then repeats it yeah. over and over. Like I felt like it did that a lot. <laughs> Acid water. <laughs> like they get there. Just like, how is he like burning and shit? Is or, this, like, is, like is how this, do we need to do these reviews from now on? I don't know. This was an experiment. This, is, this was an experiment. Well, but, I, but they had then they had to explain that it was acid water because if I if they I, hadn't said that I was just very confused. I still was very confused. Like how did it get there? <laughs> Because that's, uh, uh, they were doing like a weird like Joker moment of like uh, OG Batman of this is how the Joker's been creative. We're going to throw you into the acid water. And I was like, that's a weird, all right, nerd. Sure, let's (laughs) let's do that. Let's go for that. Sure, bro. Sure. And then like he like pops out and he's like, ah, his face is all fucked up like some Freddy Krueger shit. But also could, how... They always, at one point in the movie, I was like, these are people. These are possessed people. And like... From the get, you're like, all right, nope, it's him, it's him, and I'm gonna stab him in the face. Yeah, I, they kill a lot of innocent people. Yeah, this movie. and I mean, like, sure, he kills them too, and I guess once you're depossessed, you kind of become like depossessed. Well, yeah, the That's the cool. first guy yeah. when he was depossessed, he just goes into like 
Oh, peak yeah. disassociation. Yeah. Like, that yeah. dude looked like he was having a great time. That's and the lighter in the face, I was like, good on that Ooh, dude. That was be- pretty cool. Yeah, his oh, eyes didn't even, yeah. like, dilate. Like, um, I wonder, like, he didn't yeah. even flinch until they closed the lighter, and then he, it was, like, really yeah. slight. Um, and then they never address it again, because, yeah. oh, well, they killed them all after, and you right. don't get to come back. Like, poor horse. Um, <laughs> I'm glad they didn't show that part of, like, what is the depossessed horse is just, like, wrong. But, like, these are people, and they don't really want to focus on that part because they're too busy. I don't care what happens. I got to find this dude um, before he has the power. Just let him get to resurrection and stop hurting people and then go kill him. (laughs) Jeez. Think. What a bad cop. He wasn't Not ready. Not once was he protecting and serving. No. no. That dude pulled out his gun like every two That's seconds. That's why I feel like we always, I feel like we're always referenced 30 Rock at some point. But you know the, her agent at some point, that kid agent. Who's like, Because <laughs> he's like so like that jacket was just too big on him. <laughs> well, like, know. and then like he's like possessed of the nun. That was actually kind of cool. That was cool. And then he gets shot for stabbing her. Oh, yeah. Oh, God damn, you shot LDP. He has like nine lives. He but then you see lives. like the like it's like actually Patrick at the end. Yeah. And then the cops are like, what the Yeah, fuck? but then we then they're in the hospital and he's like all hooked up to machines and he so Lou Diamond Phillips is now possessed by Patrick. That's how it see, ended. It, it was the, the dream, right? And then she wakes up and then you hear his voice, right? Yeah, it's, I don't know. It was real uh It ended so suddenly. I sure I just it just ended. Which is like, why okay. I was so confused when you were like, and then they shot an alternate ending. I'm like, what? That was like, the was alternate that ending? Yeah. That they, was the ending that they were like, we're going to go see, bigger. You could see the photos of the original ending. Like, I don't know if they have it on video anywhere. I'm sure if someone ever remasters it, maybe. But What they, was? Yeah. It was in a warehouse. Oh. Okay. One of, like, many warehouses. So the big money was like, we're going to go to the dam. The yeah. water filtration place. <laughs> yeah. I felt bad for, like, then they burned bat. We Like, they burned our favorite character. They killed Bag Lady. Killed bag. She didn't do nothing wrong, all right? She was just having the time of her life. She was the best. And then they burned her in a pentagram. Oh and, gosh. uh, wait, pentacle? Pentagram. Pentagram. What's okay. The, is there really a difference? Yes. Uh, pentacle has the circle around it, and it's associated with, like, earth, air, fire, water, spirit. It's, you know, Wiccan, pagan. Uh, it's like protection. It's the elements. The pentagram is usually associated with Satanism. It's the inversion of that. And it's not protection. Oh, so yeah. point up is good. Point down is bad. Because this Depending one, on how you view this it. This one had a circle. Yeah. yeah down is, is satanic. It's it's what people cool, associate. When it looks like a goat. Yeah. Yes. The, yes. That's satanic. Man, so if anybody misunderstands, just know the circle and upright. Yeah. That's good. That's a talisman. That's protection. But it's this one had the circle around it when he's when they lit her on fire. Sometimes, if it's inverted, then you know, like that's goat. If it looks like a goat, it's bad. If it looks, if it, like looks a... if it doesn't look like a goat, it's good. I mean, that's it depends just... on your point of view. If you're a Satanist, then obviously it's not bad. But hey, you know, it's so, a cool symbol. As as our resident, as just our call re- me Tess. <laughs> uh, so as our resident Tess, how did you feel about the mystic elements of this movie? Um. I thought they could have gone more extreme with it. I thought, you know, I really liked that she was a celebrity psychic. I thought that was really cool. But also it's like, oh, it's L.A. So, of course you are. But as far as I know, I mean, (laughs) psychicness doesn't work to like the T. It doesn't be like, I knew you were going to say that or I knew this was going to happen or I I knew you're going to jump out three seconds beforehand. And I don't know. It's just gimmicky when they do things like that but I, it's fun though well it's, she knew how to finish his yeah. sentences but she exactly. didn't know that he broke into her house exactly <laughs> and it does it you know that's that's the shit that like when you have people if you do it professionally and they're just like you know like i mentioned before during tarot am i gonna marry this guy in palm springs on december you know 12th and then you say i can't really predict the future that's not how it works and they're like fuck you <laughs> you're not real you're fake you're a fake psychic so it doesn't really quite work that way but i do appreciate her 90s ibm website computer like geo cities tripod website (laughs) angel fire whatever it was and she had her you know her little star chart and stuff i thought that was cool that she had like an oracle thing i thought it was what does that do the which one the star charts i'm pretty sure it was supposed to be like a birth chart or like um, an astrology chart and just, you know, it tells you your moon sign, your sun sign, your rising sign, your Venus, Venus your 
sparkle you're the no, just, it doesn't say sparkle but it just sounds so silly which powder puff girl you are which powder puff girl you are which power you have if you had a power of i the have first. the eighth power it's, which which house your power is in none of us have the power of controlling electronics if we did we would have way less technical difficulties we would have been done this hours ago we yeah. would have been done with a lot of things <laughs> damn it all right satan i need i need the fourth power i need the fourth power <laughs> oh my goodness well, i don't know this is uh i think we covered all the things yeah I think we... so don't make me watch that again <laughs> it's so fun it was a movie yeah, it wasn't it's... as bad but i just I, you know uh, cop movies aren't my aren't my thing yeah. and i think that a lot of this felt like a cop movie i wish it was just a sitcom of following tess around <laughs> oh on her gosh. little psychic adventures uh so yeah that's first power uh first power. you're welcome uh, you can watch it yourself on Tubi or Pluto. Please let us know what you think of the first power. And uh, we've got a slumber party episode next week. One more Mystic mm-hmm. May for you. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we'll say if you if you liked what you saw, if you like what you see, <laughs> and you want the un you want the watered down version that tastes like Perrier, uh, you. <laughs> go to the patreon and we put the full uh all all the stuff all the full uncut episode on on patreon unless there's something really really awful that we have to pretend never happened it's but usually something that i say it's something that has to be cut out for your own sake for your own safety <laughs> yeah so so it doesn't come back to haunt us later yes. but they will all those babies will be up there longer episodes will throw uh my pretty awesome uh bullet point list on the yes. discord we'll throw our slasher size fitness questions from dead right trivia on the discord uh yeah so follow us on patreon and and all our uh, the other socials we have instagram tiktok mm-hmm. the youtubes the youtubes, the YouTubes. pillow YouTubes. fright pod on all platforms if i'm correct yes, yes. and we're really getting ready to drop some pretty ambitious stuff on yeah. youtube so please like like subscribe click the bell Join us. Donate so we can go have a coffin ride with with at Tom's house. Yes, because I still wanna. I just I just wanna I really just wanna chill in that coffin that. real bad. And, and and also, if you wanna buy us that first power mask, that would be cool. We'll showcase it. We'll write your name on it. We don't have sugar daddies because we're nerds. <laughs> Do I keep that in? <laughs> If you want to be a sugar daddy, you can you find Emma's sh- feet on Wiki. <laughs> if you want to be a sugar parent. Oh, yeah. I, I'm fine with sugar mamas. Sugar. I'm fine sh- with sugar. We're sugar anyone's. Here. Sugar we're, sugar people. We're sugar humans. Here. Sugar human. Sugar human. You want to be our sugar you human. You want to be our sugar human. Sugar wow. Human. Wow. Sugar this monster. might not be a great thing for the world to hear. <laughs> What's happening? I thought we were cutting because for. I said feet. Be careful what you wish for, Pillow Fry Pod. You're not going to be happy with your inbox. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> sweet screams, everybody. <laughs> I think was that the right time? Is that the moment? <laughs> I just snotted all over your microphone. I'm just That's letting yours you know. Now. Please mark <laughs> Good it. luck. And until next time, sweet screams, everybody. And whatever you do, don't fall asleep first. Oh, <laughs> so LDP for life.